Auto shows, as well as customer clinics, provide Buick with an opportunity to gain valuable insight into the features buyers most want to see on Buick models. At the 1995 International Auto Show in Detroit, Buick unveiled a vehicle that provides a glimpse into the future of automotive design. The XP2000 Dream Car represents the ultimate use of advanced technology to enhance the convenience, comfort and safety of Buick owners. The car is an elegant five-passenger sedan showcasing excellent packaging, the length of a mid-size Regal, wheelbase of a Roadmaster, and interior space of a Park Avenue. The heart of the XP2000 is a network of advanced computers that tailor the car to the needs and desires of the individual driver. There's an advanced head-up display and an instrument panel display that can be adapted for use with a personal computer, a navigation system with arrows guiding the driver along a map display, and an array of safety features ranging from eight airbags, including one in each door panel, to a detection system for obstacles near the path of the car. The computer allows the XP2000 to use the intelligent vehicle highway systems that are planned for the next century. These computers also link the car to the rapidly growing information superhighway, making it easier for the driver to work and relax while in the car. Beyond the stunning use of advanced automotive technology, one of the key aspects of the XP2000 is its ability to conform to the owner's personal preferences. Among specific features is a remote keyless fob that can position the car's seats, climate controls, and even driving response to a specific driver's tastes. Hi, I'm Chuck McLennan. While the XP2000 remains truly a dream car, one of its key features, personal choice, is about to appear on real-world Buicks, as we'll see in this Buick know-how, our 1996 product preview. Personal Choice offers Buick owners a higher level of comfort, convenience, and security. It allows the remote keyless entry system to communicate with the vehicle electronics and provide driver identification. The remote keyless entry system can now distinguish which of the two transmitters provided with the car has been used to unlock the doors. When a signal is received from the transmitter, the driver's preferred settings for each of the programmable features are automatically selected. Let's look at the personal choice features. Memory door locks allow the driver to select one of four operating modes for the automatic door locks. Vehicles are delivered with mode three pre-programmed. In this mode, all doors automatically lock when the shift lever is moved out of park and automatically unlock when the lever is returned to park. The next mode is zero. In the zero mode, the automatic door lock feature is turned off, so there is no action when the shift lever is moved. In mode one, all doors automatically lock when the car is shifted out of park. Doors stay locked when the shift lever is returned to park. In the next mode, mode two, all doors automatically lock when the car is shifted out of park. Only the driver's door unlocks when the shift lever is returned to park. The others stay locked. Vehicles are delivered with mode three pre-programmed. To change this mode, close all doors and turn the ignition on. Press and hold the driver's power door lock switch and at the same time, press the lock button on the remote transmitter. On the first press, the door locks will remain in the current mode. When I press the lock button a second time, the locks will cycle to the next mode. If I continue to hold the power door lock switch, automatic door locks will advance by one mode each time I press the lock button on the transmitter. When I'm in the mode I prefer, I simply remove my finger to release the door lock button 
and that becomes the new setting. The next personal choice feature is delayed locking. This feature is off when new cars are shipped and must be activated initially using a Tech One scan tool. You'll find programming instructions in the Buick Know How Technician's Manual. When this option is activated, it lets the driver delay the actual locking of the vehicle. With the key out of the ignition and the driver's door open, a chime sounds three times when the door lock switch is pressed. This signals that the delayed locking mode is active. When all doors have been closed, a timer will count down five seconds. Then the doors lock automatically. If any door is opened before the five seconds is up, the timer will reset when all doors are closed again. Pressing the door lock switch twice within two seconds will override this feature. As with memory door locks, the remote transmitter is used in combination with the door lock switch to program this option. To activate delayed locking, press and hold the power door lock switch. At the same time, press the unlock button on the remote transmitter once. The lock delay is still off and all doors will remain locked. Press the transmitter unlock button a second time and the doors will unlock to signal that delayed locking is activated. The same procedure is used to turn off the feature. Keep in mind that delayed locking is only activated for the transmitter used during the programming. If the owner wants both transmitters to activate delayed locking, the same procedure must be repeated for the second transmitter. Oh, and by the way, delayed locking is also standard on vehicles not equipped with remote keyless entry. After the feature has been initialized using the Tech One, it can be turned off and on by the owner. To deactivate delayed locking on cars without keyless entry, turn the ignition on. Press and hold the power lock switch. The doors will lock. Then toggle the headlamp switch seven times, beginning in the off position. On cars not equipped with remote keyless entry, the doors will unlock to signal delayed locking is turned off. This car has remote keyless entry. Repeating these steps will also turn delayed locking back on. The next personal choice option we have is security feedback. This feature allows the driver to choose the type of visual or audible feedback signal received from the vehicle when the remote transmitter is used to lock or unlock the doors. There are six modes to choose from. In the zero mode, there is no audible or visual response when the car is locked or unlocked. In mode one, there is no response when the doors are locked, but the exterior lamps illuminate when the doors are unlocked. In mode two, the lamps flash when the car is locked, and there is no response for unlocking. Mode 3 illuminates the lamps anytime the doors are locked or unlocked. In Mode 4, the exterior lamps flash and the horn chirps when locking. There is no response for unlocking. Finally, there's the factory set Mode 5, in which the exterior lamps flash and the horn chirps when locking and the lamps illuminate when unlocking. Programming a security feedback mode is similar to the procedures we just saw for the first two personal choice options. Again, I press and hold the power door lock switch and at the same time, I press the trunk button on the transmitter to initiate the programming sequence. When pressed a second time, the trunk button advances the program to the next mode. Since the factory setting is mode 5, the next mode in sequence is mode 0. Mode 1 is next, then 2, and so on. And when I release the door lock switch, the current mode is selected. Perimeter lighting is another new feature included as standard on 1996 Park Avenue Ultra, LeSabre Limited, and Riviera models. 
This feature, which is also available with the remote keyless entry option on LeSabre Custom and Park Avenue, can help an owner's feeling of security when approaching the car in the dark. When the remote transmitter is used to unlock the doors, the headlamps, parking lamps, backup lamps, and cornering lamps illuminate for 15 seconds to provide visibility around the car. On cars so equipped, this feature will activate only when ambient lighting is dark enough according to the Twilight Sentinel light sensor on the instrument panel. Also, the car must be programmed to provide a security feedback signal when the doors are unlocked. The perimeter lighting function is turned on at the factory. To turn off perimeter lighting, press and hold the door lock switch. Then I press the new instant alarm button on the 1996 remote transmitter. That's the one with the horn symbol. When I press the alarm button one time, the horn will chirp twice to signal that perimeter lighting is still turned on. When I press the alarm button again, the horn will chirp once to signal perimeter lighting is disabled and will remain in this mode when I release the lock. To turn it back on, I just repeat the procedure and listen for the double horn chirps that indicate perimeter lighting is enabled. When the instant alarm button is pressed, the headlamps and tail lamps flash and the horn sounds for up to two minutes. The alarm turns off when the button is pressed again or the ignition is turned on or the door is unlocked with the key. There's one other personal choice feature available on Park Avenue and Riviera models. I can also program the memory driver seat and mirrors to respond to the unlock signal from the remote transmitter. To personalize this option, I start by adjusting the driver seat to a comfortable position. On Park Avenue only, I can also store the power reclining seat back position in memory. Then I adjust the outside rear view mirrors. When the seat and mirrors are how I want them, I press the set button on the door armrest. A beep will sound. When I press one of the memory buttons on the armrest within five seconds, two beeps will sound to confirm that my seat and mirror settings are stored in memory. Now, if I press the unlock button on the transmitter within five seconds, two more beeps will sound to indicate the memory settings are programmed into this transmitter. Some owners may prefer the driver's seat to move completely down and back to the exit position when the doors are unlocked. To program this option, press the set button and listen for the beep. Then press the exit button. Again, you will hear a beep, but the seat will not move at this time. Now press the transmitter unlock button within five seconds and two beeps will sound to confirm the seat is programmed. It will now assume the exit position when this transmitter is used to unlock the doors. The second transmitter is programmed the same way. And those are the personal choice options. I'm sure you'll agree they should greatly enhance owner satisfaction. Personal choice check sheets will be provided to assist dealership personnel when setting new owner's preferences for each of the options we've seen. In addition to personal choice, Many other electrical features have been introduced or expanded throughout the 1996 Buick model lineup. Lockout protection prevents the doors from locking if the lock button is pressed with the door open and the key has been left in the ignition. The lock button must be pressed for three seconds to override this feature. Delayed entry lighting is now standard on all 1996 Buicks. As you may recall, with this system, the interior lights remain on for 25 seconds after all doors are closed or until the ignition is turned on. Delayed exit lighting operates similarly to provide 15 seconds of interior illumination or 25 on Riviera when the ignition key is removed. This feature is now standard on Skylark, LeSabre, Park Avenue and Riviera. Theater dimming, originally introduced on Skylark, is now also standard on Regal, LeSabre, Park Avenue, and Riviera models. 
This feature provides a three to five second gradual fade out when interior lamps turn off. Battery rundown protection, also introduced on Skylark, turns off power to courtesy, reading, trunk, glove box, vanity mirror, and map lights if any are left on for more than 10 minutes. This is now extended as a standard feature for Le Sabre, Park Avenue, and Riviera. We already looked at the instant alarm feature. Central unlocking, which unlocks all doors when the driver's door key is held in the unlock position for one second, is available on Le Sabre Limited, Park Avenue, and Riviera. It's also standard on Park Avenue Ultra. Parade dimming, available only on Riviera, prevents radio and instrument cluster lamps from dimming while headlamps are on during daylight. Notice, too, that the 1996 Riviera is now equipped with the Buick family of radios, as well as climate controls. The Buick family of radios is now also available in Skylark. Already a national quality leader, Skylark is the most noticeably changed member of the 1996 model lineup. The grille and hood are redesigned to provide a softer, more elegant contour that is carried through into the restyled front bumper. Headlamps are also reshaped to complement the new front-end look, while the parking and turn signal lamps retain some of Skylark's familiar styling cues. The body side moldings are changed for a softer look, as are the more rounded rear wheel openings. There's also a new treatment for the rear fascia and tail lamps. Skylark's new looks don't stop with the exterior. The seats are redesigned by the same Buick Comfort team that was responsible for Riviera seating. A new design front bench seat is standard on Custom and Limited, while these bucket seats and console are also available. Door and rear quarter trim panels are now padded for a softer, more luxurious feel. A three-point active front safety belt system is used with a new end release button. The belt is now attached to the B-pillar. Another safety addition is the passenger side airbag mounted on top of the all-new instrument panel. The storage compartment door serves a dual purpose as a knee bolster to limit forward motion during a frontal collision. The electronic instrument panel cluster with its easy to read analog style gauges is also new. Available in both base and up-level models, the cluster is a microprocessor controlled device that maintains serial data communication with Skylark's major electrical components. These include the ABS controller, the PCM, the airbag sensing diagnostic module, the data link connector, the transaxle's electronic prindle module, and the new passlock theft deterrent system. The PCM through the IPC data link controls the engine coolant temperature gauge, the tachometer, the speedometer, and the check engine or malfunction indicator lamp. It also controls the lamps for check oil and oil pressure, cruise control, low coolant, and low voltage indicators. With pass lock, a standard feature on 96 Skylark, a single key is used for the ignition and all locks. You'll notice there is no resistor pellet mounted in the key. Instead, there's a magnet within the lock cylinder, which rotates past a stationary Hall effect sensor when the key is turned. The Hall sensor produces a resistance code, which is sent to the instrument panel cluster, or IPC, for verification. The ignition switch is mounted separately from the key and lock cylinder, but is synchronized through an actuator rod assembly. The ignition switch electrically signals the IPC to start a specific timing sequence when the cylinder is turned to the start position. If the resistance code is correct and received within a preset time limit, the IPC microprocessor sends a coded password signal to the PCM, which enables fuel injection, so the engine can start and run. If the correct resistance code is received, but not within the correct time limit, the theft deterrent system enters a short tamper mode. During this short tamper mode, the theft system telltale light flashes and the fuel system is disabled for four seconds. If the IPC receives three consecutive failed timings, it enters a long temper mode, which disables fuel injection for approximately 10 minutes. 
The theft system telltale also flashes for the duration of this mode. The theft deterrent system will immediately enter the long tamper mode if the IPC receives the wrong resistance code from the lock cylinder. If an open occurs in the serial data communication link between the IPC and the PCM, the theft system telltale will light continuously. You'll find more details on the pass lock system in the technician's reference manual with this Buick know-how. Skylark's standard engine is a new 2.4 liter twin cam LD9. This engine has all the features of the 1995 16 valve 2.3 liter four cylinder including the oil pan mounted balance shafts. However, a larger displacement provides additional power. Peak horsepower is now reached at 6,000 RPM while it produces 150 pound-feet of torque at only 4,400 RPM. To reduce vibration, the CS130D generator with quieter running dual internal cooling fans is mounted directly to the engine, as is the AC compressor. There's also a new design composite intake manifold that's tuned for improved performance. Skylark's driving performance is further improved by the addition of an enhanced traction system that's controlled by the Delphi ABS-6 electronic brake and traction control module, the EBTCM. Unlike the Tevis and Bosch traction control systems, the Skylark system does not use the brakes to limit wheel slip. When the EBTCM detects wheel slip at one of the front ABS wheel speed sensors, it signals the PCM through the serial data link to reduce engine torque output. The EBTCM will command the PCM to retard spark in order to reduce engine torque. Or, if the degree of wheel slip is high enough that it cannot be controlled by retarding spark alone, the controller will command the PCM to upshift the transaxle for increased drive torque reduction. Enhanced traction control will not be enabled if a brake or park brake signal is received catalytic converter temperature is above normal, or engine coolant temperature is outside the normal range. A 240-watt engine cooling fan is now standard on Skylark. This fan spins up to 500 RPM faster than the previous model, providing a 20% improvement in airflow across the radiator. This added fan capacity improves AC cooling performance. As before, Skylark is also available with a 3.1 liter V6 engine. This engine has been modified for 1996 with new design rocker arms that improve fuel economy and reduce valve train noise. For precise air metering as well as better performance, a mass airflow sensor is added to the Skylark and Regal versions of the 3one the engine block and intake manifold designs are modified for reduced noise and improved performance. On Skylark, the 3.1 liter produces 155 horsepower at 5200 RPM. This V6 engine is also available on 1996 Century and standard on Regal. Other improvements for Century are a stainless steel exhaust, a new starter motor, and delayed exit lighting. The 96 Regal also benefits from the improvements made to the standard 3.1 liter V6 and is also available with the 3800 Series 2 engine as an option. The 5.7 liter LT1 V8 engine in 96 Roadmaster has also been modified with new low resistance spark plug wires that improve cold start performance. A crankshaft position sensor has also been added for compliance with OBD2 regulations which take effect this year. A new OBD2 compliant throttle body is also added and a diagnostic switch for improved monitoring for the evaporative emissions system. The Roadmaster oil pan also receives a new metric thread magnetic drain plug. There's also a new water pump. 1996 also brings some under-hood changes for Buick's flagship models. The 205 horsepower 3800 Series 2 engine, which debuted on the 95 Riviera and Park Avenue, is now standard on LeSabre also. The air intake housing and filter are enlarged to meet the greater induction demands of this engine. The powertrain control module is in a new vertically mounted location in the left front fender. 
It's housed in an insulated cover that protects it from the environment. Also, the cruise control on Riviera, Park Avenue, and LeSabre models is changed from the vacuum-operated system to the more accurate stepper motor design used on other Buick models. For 1996, a new anti-lock brake and traction control system is used on LeSabre and Park Avenue models. This system is similar in appearance and operation to the Bosch system introduced on 1995 Roadmaster, except that it's a four-channel front-wheel drive version of the system. Here's something else to keep in mind regarding the Bosch system. The ABS diagnostic self-check occurs when the car reaches three miles per hour. As you may recall, the current Tevis Mark IV system performs the self-check at 12 and a half miles per hour, and there's a noticeable pulsation in the brake pedal. On the new system, the brake pedal feel, while the pump is running during the self-test, is barely noticeable. Optional on Riviera and standard on Park Avenue Ultra is an exciting new supercharged version of the 3800 Series 2. A redesigned supercharger with a larger internal diameter combines with high-flow fuel injectors to provide a hefty 240 horsepower at 5200 RPM and 280 pound-feet of torque at 3,200 RPM. All 1996 Buick cooling systems are filled with new DexCool engine coolant. Colored orange for identification, DexCool is ethylene glycol, like conventional green antifreeze. However, DexCool contains a unique organic corrosion inhibitor. This formulation extends the coolant service interval from two years, 30,000 miles, to an impressive five years and 100,000 miles. It's important to remember that cooling systems on cars shipped with DexCool should never be topped off with conventional coolant. Once contaminated with the silicate-based inhibitors that are used in regular coolant, DexCool loses its extended life properties and its exchange interval is reduced to the standard two years, 30,000 miles. DexCool forms a protective film on aluminum surfaces within the first 3,000 miles of vehicle operation. It's especially important that regular coolant is not added to a DexCool system within this first 3,000 miles period. Otherwise, aluminum corrosion may occur. If such contamination accidentally occurs on a new vehicle during initial prep, for example, the cooling system must be immediately and completely drained and refilled with DexCool. If contamination occurs after the car has been driven at least 3,000 miles, no short-term damage will occur, but as I mentioned earlier, the conventional coolant service interval must be used from that point on. All 1996 engines are also equipped with extended long-life platinum-tipped spark plugs, which, like DexCool, require service intervals of 100,000 miles. I mentioned that all Buick engines comply with OBD2 regulations. Let's look for a moment at what OBD2 is all about. In 1988, the California Air Resources Board initiated the standard onboard diagnostics Generation 1, OBD-1. Under the original standard, all California vehicles were required to be equipped with onboard computer monitoring systems, similar to those already in use by GM at the time. In 1988, requirements were also drafted for a stricter emissions standard, OBD-2, to take effect at a later date. Well. That later date is now. Federal law requires that all automakers meet OBD2 standards by 1996. OBD2 mandates that an onboard computer will monitor and actively perform diagnostic tests on all emissions related components throughout the lifetime of every vehicle. Conforming to OBD2 regulations has required a considerable number of changes to the vehicle onboard computer as well as the use of some new and some modified powertrain and emissions components. All vehicles must have a standardized 16-pin data link connector, DLC, located on the lower left side of the driver's side instrument panel. This is to permit the use of standardized data gathering equipment, like Tech One, for vehicles from different manufacturers. If any related system or component malfunctions, or deteriorates to a point where emissions could rise above a set level, usually one and a half times the FTP limit, OBD2 requires that a malfunction indicator light must illuminate. 
The MIL is similar to the service engine soon lamps used on current Buicks. However, operation of the lamp is much more strictly controlled. The most significant difference is that OBD2 regulations stipulate that only emissions related diagnostic trouble codes may cause the MIL to illuminate. This means that when traditional drivability related problems occur, the PCM will not illuminate the MIL unless an emissions component is involved in the condition. So, it's now increasingly important that service technicians always check for stored DTCs when diagnosing drivability conditions. OBD2 has made the management of DTCs and monitoring functions of the PCM much more complicated. New computer software known as the Diagnostic Executive is used for setting emissions-related DTCs and gathering and storing information when they occur. Every time a vehicle is driven, its emission system components must have several tests run on them, some once per trip and some continuously. Some tests are performed only under specific operating conditions. For example, when a misfire occurs, engine coolant temperature, engine load, and engine RPM are recorded. This information is stored in a freeze frame the instant the DTC sets. A freeze frame is different than the Tech One snapshot function which stores the history of several powertrain parameters over several seconds. In some cases, a DTC must occur more than once before the MIL is illuminated. This data can be retrieved using a scan tool such as the Tech one Adapters must be used to enable the Tech one and 1A to read the data. You can learn more about OBD2 from CPT courses which are prerequisites for training center classes. For the first time, the 1996 bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty on all Buick models includes the tires. The immediate benefit of this coverage for Buick customers is that their tire concerns can be taken care of where they bought their car. They no longer will have to deal with third-party tire manufacturers or retail outlets. Tire replacement and all communication with the tire manufacturers and suppliers is now the responsibility of the dealership. When a customer reports a tire-related condition, the dealership will determine if a tire replacement is necessary. The service department will obtain a replacement from a local retailer or direct from the manufacturer on a national account delivery basis. The retailer receives credit from the tire manufacturer who in turn bills General Motors directly. When the tire is installed on the customer's vehicle, the dealership submits a warranty claim to GM for mounting and balancing. The dealer also returns the removed tire to the manufacturer for inspection. If the complaint is warranty covered, the manufacturer credits GM for the full amount of the tire, including mounting and balancing allowance or a prorated amount. Tire manufacturers will continue to assume financial responsibility for their existing coverage. For more information on warranty tire replacement procedures, as well as information on tire inspection, refer to the training program featuring the GM Milford Proving Grounds resident tire engineer and sometime Buick know-how guest, Dick Gratz. I think you'll agree, taking care of our customers' comfort and convenience is definitely our theme for 1996 and beyond. As Buick continues to make great cars even better, Take some time to familiarize yourself with the new features so you can answer customers' questions that may arise. I'll see you in the next Buick Know-How.